hopefully today's would be the last class on the introduction and we would spend some time talking about what is AI. So, if you think about where we are, we started giving you some uh, sort of background on the field, right. We talked about the history of the field. We talked about how this field has become uber important in the modern world in the last few years, how suddenly a lot of people have started talking about AI. And so, I guess it is it's appropriate that so many of you want to understand AI because you know it is a technology for the present and for the future. And when we start thinking about AI, the first <coughs> point that we should spend some time on is what is AI and what is the philosophy of AI. And at least it is my perspective that I will not only talk about the techniques and the uh, you know algorithms and so on and so forth. I will also give a broad overview of the philosophy of AI, the ways of thinking about the AI, the AI mindset, which is actually significant, right. There is a lot about the AI mindset which is different from the rest of the computer science mindset and we will try our best to expose that and talk about it. And so, even in the middle you will find that you know later down the line when we are looking at specific uh, techniques, you will find that I will take a detour and talk about something which is more philosophical and you will see that how a lot of things that we talk about in AI also relates to how we think about you know our psychology or how, how we make decisions and so on and so forth. So, the, hopefully these sorts of ideas will get uh, come out in the course as the course evolves. <coughs> so, the uh, so the goal for today is to define AI ok and AI is obviously a fairly uh, uh, controversial subject controversial in the sense that a lot of people disagree with each other on what is AI right. So, let us first talk about AI as a science right. We will also take an engineering and other views, but let us look at what is the science of AI right. And so, as with every scientific discipline there is a fundamental question that they think about right. So, if you think about physics they will think about the question where did the physical universe come from right. What laws guide the dynamics of a physical system. Similarly, in biology uh, if you think about what is something that sort of pervades everything in biology it is how did the biological life evolve, how do living organisms functions, how do they get specialized in doing specific functions and so on and so forth. And in the same way we have to sort of define AI and it is going to be a hard exercise right. Uh, and so, the easiest and you know the boring way of doing this is to say oh what is the nature of intelligent thought. Can I mechanize intelligent thought, can I use a uh, uh, can I take uh, the idea of how thought happens and put it in a machine right. Now, of course, there is an issue with this definition and the fundamental issue is that in order to define AI, we have said that it is about intelligent thought, but it is going to be hard to define what intelligent, it is going to be hard to define intelligent right. Of course, if you think about it AI is composed of A and I. An artificial part might be relatively easier, we know what are living organisms, we know what are non living organisms, but the I part is going to be harder what exactly is intelligence. So, let me crowdsource the definition ok. What is intelligence? What according to you is a possible definition of AI uh, of intelligence? Anybody? Sorry, please raise your hand. Yes, what is your name? Medha, yes. Rational decisions. Rational decisions, ok. So, you have read a lot about AI, right. And now he says AI is something, uh, intelligence is about rational decision making. What is rational? We do not know. We will probably talk about that in the next few slides because that is sort of the definition that I am trying to get to, but there must be some more simpler definitions of intelligence. Do you have a hand? Yes. Intelligence varies according to the goal of the system. What is your name? Harsh. So, Harsh says intelligence varies according to the goal of the system. Now, I am not going to disagree with that. Obviously, if I want to go east, I should not be going west, right. So, obviously, my decisions should be dependent on what my goal is, but that is not the definition, right. For many biological life forms intelligence is survival and therefore, whatever they do for survival would should be called intelligent behavior. Again I do not disagree with it, but that is not the definition of intelligence. And in fact, when you start digging this right and you will see this again and again in any type of concept you want to define. Let us say you want to define what is a thing or what is a game 
of what is the chair, you will be lost. I'm not kidding you. I remember the humanities course where we spent a lot of time just defining what is a game. And we realized that a game need not be two player, it need not be multiplayer, it need not be adversarial, it can be you playing with yourself, it, it need not have cards, it need not have any object whatsoever. It is just very complicated to figure out what is game and what is not a game. What is a chair? A chair has four legs. Well, this chair does not have four legs, that chair there. Well, it, it needs to stand on its own, then a table is also a chair. It gets super confusing. It can be used to sit, then a bed is a chair. I mean, you will get confused. Then the, a chair should not be the sofa. Sofa is different, chair is different. You will find that defining any such extremely simple concept that you and I understand very well, very, very, very well, very intimately, we have used it and so on and so forth. You will find that as soon as you try to put a definition to it, it will become difficult. Right. And so, <coughs> was the case when we started looking at what is intelligence. By the way, how do we in humans uh, assess if what is the intelligence of a human? By the IQ tests, exactly. But we then there you will see pages and pages written on how IQ tests are not the right measures of intelligence. So, there, there is lot of contention in how to measure intelligence. So, these are difficult concepts and to define them becomes extremely hard, but we will try our best and we will sort of come back to the definition that you know Medha had, uh, but let us let us go one step at a time. So, I had a humanities professor who used to say when in doubt consult a dictionary. It is a very beautiful statement. He said that you know to clear your brain it is important, clear your mind it is important to have the real meanings of words and dictionary really gives you that. And of course, in modern world, we should say when in doubt, consult Google, right? So, that is how the modern world has evolved. You need not consult a dictionary anymore. Most people do not even buy a dictionary. It is at our phones, it is at our fingertips all the time. So, I looked at the dictionary definition of intelligence and I was highly dis disappointed, highly dissatisfied. So, dictionary.com definition says, capacity for learning, reasoning, understanding and similar forms of mental activity. Now, notice that th two things that this definition did about intelligence. First of all, it gave examples. So, this is definition by example. It said, oh, learning is intelligence, reasoning is intelligence, basically something like that. And then because it wanted to have a definition, it ended up by saying, and similar forms of mental activity. Now, notice that what this definition is saying is that intelligence is equal to whatever happens in our brain. What is mental activity? Whatever happens in our brain. And it was implied that this is we are talking about human mental activity and not dolphins mental activity or elephants mental activity, right? Though uh, it need not be. So, there are two, as I said, there are two issues. A, it is not a definition that is operationalizable per se because it only lists a few examples. And moreover, it is saying that whatever humans do is intelligent, which is not satisfying, right? So, first of all, what are the examples? Well, ability to perceive the world, like say I can look at you guys and figure out where is a face, where is an eye, where is a chair, act in the world, you know I am speaking to you, that is my actions in the world, reasoning, Right, proving theorems, medical diagnosis, those are reasoning questions. I get some evidence, I reason about what might be going on. Planning, taking decisions. So, in order to act, I need to decide what to do, that is called planning. Learning, it says, right. So, learning and adaptation. So, recommend movies, learn traffic patterns. You know that in the morning, this particular uh, route is very heavily subscribed. So, I should take the alternative route. I know that this friend of mine recommends me movies, but I do not like those movies. So, I do not like this friend's recommendations. Whenever he recommends the next movie, I know that you know that movie I should not see. So, that is called learning, right. We learn, we have, we all have friends like this, right, right and, uh, and so on. And understanding, right, understanding text, understanding speech, understanding vision, understanding what is going on around me. So, all of those would be manifestations of intelligence, right. But it still begs the question, is mental activity intelligence and that is the end of it? What is the relationship between intelligence and humans? Are humans intelligent? What do you say? Are humans intelligent? Come on. 
yes right i i saw some person said no <laughs> no right she knows a lot of people we don't right and uh sure we can say humans are intelligent i think that will be fair but then to her credit you can also ask the question are humans always intelligent and there i am pretty sure most people will say the answer is no we all have been in situations where we have done something we feel art is dumb or we have friends who uh, we realize you know how did they become a human so the point is uh, uh, right we need to somehow dissociate the definition of intelligence from what humans do because that is limiting and moreover we do know that there is non human behavior which is considered intelligent you know there is lot of news you will find on you know dolphins can do this which humans cannot uh, dogs can hear frequencies which humans cannot so they can sense things which we could not sense etc etc and all of that makes us believe that there is intelligence out there which is non human but and we need to dissociate intelligence with humans by the way the fact that humans are intelligent and the fact that intelligence was in very primitive times a few years ago right few means maybe 15 20 replicating human behavior has traditionally been considered an a hallmark of intelligence right so a simple example is let's say chess let's say we are in the 80s what is our goal in chess our goal in chess is to defeat the humans replicate human behavior be as good as them right there's nothing wrong in saying that humans are intelligent and i want to build an ai system that is like a human or that is equal to a human or like or better than a human but today in the modern world suppose i say that my goal in chess is to defeat humans will we consider it intelligent anymore no because we we that boat has sailed the humans are far worse if we have if we have to build an ai system that is as good as a human in chess that means that we are dumbing down our ai system we are doing it only maybe for training so that the poor human can you know play with my chess machine and become slightly better than he or she is right so that is no longer intelligence so you will always find that there is this human line and your ai systems are right here and you keep improving them and they keep getting better and better and better and better and better and then some uh, great new story happens here deep blue defeated Ch uh, gary kasparov or alpha go defeated lee sedol or whatever and then at some point the chess or whatever the ai system becomes better and it becomes better and better to the extent that humans stop playing with the ai system earlier humans did not play with the ai system it was too bad then they started playing because it was an equal and then they stop playing because oh man ai is too good and by the way that also leads to a very interesting phenomenon called the mixed initiative system in the for example today it is said that the best chess player is not a human the best chess player is not a machine the best chess player yes exactly it's a combination of a human and machine it's a team it's a collaboration and it is a world that you will probably be uh, living more and more in where the ai and the human are going to work together about a task very simple things you can still do like you do a to do list you set a alarm you set a timer or you have a to do list which says i have to buy milk from this particular you know grocery store and you are driving and suddenly the cell phone buzzes and says you know you are very close to that grocery store it's right right around the block go buy your milk that is a joint collaboration between a human and an ai system a very simple joint collaboration i'm not saying that it's too deep but the point is that the ai system knows what you need to do ai system knows where you are the ai system figures out oh your next appointment has 10 more minutes in the middle when you are driving the traffic dra directions uh, suggest that you will reach 10 minutes earlier why don't i use these 10 minutes and help you buy your milk and get one thing out of off the to do list now this is a world we can easily live in today maybe some people are already living in but more and more such collaborations will be seen in the future in my opinion so coming back when we define intelligence we need to say yes we can be initially inspired by replicating human behavior but in the long run intelligence is more than what just humans do so that leads us to thinking about okay how should we define ai 
with this background and we will uh, come back to uh, the particular point about humans, but the first thing we did, I did not, but you know people who sort of really made these slides, uh, they went to the old AI textbooks and said let us see what the different scholars say about what is AI. And behold, we get many different definitions okay. and again this does not surprise us because we know that defining such things is complicated, people have different opinions etcetera. Right? This is a philosophy question at this point. So, <coughs> we suddenly see a, uh, uh, a set of definitions which you can put in for uh, a 2 cross 2 grid. So, let me read these definitions for you. AI is automation of activities that we associate with human thinking activities such as decision making, problem solving, learning. This is very similar to the dictionary definition of what is intelligence except that now we have added the automation of part right. Then the other definition is the study of mental faculties through the use of computational models. It is a somewhat of a terse and uh, less clear definition, but it says that let us study, let us create a computational model that allows us to think in some ways, allows us to create mental processes in the machine. The third definition is the study of how to make computers do things at which at the moment people are better. Look such an such a complex definition, it is not even, so this is exactly if it works it is not AI kind of a definition. Because it says at present humans are better and let us try to solve that particular problem then it will be AI now, but tomorrow it will not be AI because then at then point we will not be better and there will be something else that the humans will be better and AI would be in the pursuit of that and so as soon as it works it stops to be AI, ceases to be AI. That is exactly that definition. And the last definition is the branch of computer science that is concerned with the automation of intelligent behavior. Again it does not even go into intelligence, what is intelligence? It just says anything that is intelligent behavior is AI, right. So if we sort of abstract out the specific details and you know uh, try to reason it at a high level, we can say that these four definitions fit in approximately these two cross two grid where um, one dimension is human like versus rational ok. So, this is the human like box or column and this is the rational column even though the definitions did not use the word rational you did though right. And if you look at the rows it is more about whether we are interested in thought or actions. So, in short our four possible definitions of AI are let us make a system that can think like humans, let us make a system that can act like humans, let us make a system that can think rationally and let us make a system that can act rationally. Everybody with me? Now I, I will let you think about it for a few seconds and see if you can feel that one definition feels like the right definition of AI for you. This is written by credible researchers in the field, so obviously we are <coughs> not going to say that any one of you is wrong per se. But let us see if you can resonate with one definition more than the other. So how many of you feel that thinking like humans is the right definition of AI? One person, two, two people? Two people, three, ok. How many of you think that acting like humans is a better definition, the right definition of AI? Acting like humans, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 13, 14, right? So, good, right? More people think that acting like humans is better than thinking like humans. What about thinking rationally, how do you, how many th say that thinking rationally, finding the computational model which can sort of get, get you to the right thought is a good one, almost the same number as acting humanly, very good. And last but not the least, how many of you think that acting rationally is a better definition of AI, maybe slightly more, maybe let us say 25 percent, 30 percent of the class, 30 percent of the class. 
So notice that we have so many philosophers in our group because they are already starting to disagree, right? Now, let us see if I can get some credible points of view as to why one definition is a good definition and one definition is not a good definition. So, anybody who thought that acting like humans is a good definition, can you justify why or can you say why this? Yes, please. What is your name? It is in accordance with the Turing test. Very good. What is your name? Ansh. So, Ansh says, you know, acting like humans is in accordance with the Turing test and I believe Turing. I mean, he is not putting more thought in whether Turing is right or not. He is just saying, oh, well, Turing said it, has to be true. And Turing devised the Turing test, got to be the right demonstration of AI. But he is right at one level. He says that Turing test checks for acting humanly. Everybody agree with me? Agrees with me? Let us quickly talk about Turing test, right? So, Turing test, for people who do not know, you have a screen and you have a judge you do not know what is behind the screen. The judge asks questions from the screen, uh, let us say types the questions. So, let us take the speech recognition part out, types the questions and on the screen you get the answers from anything behind the, the screen which is sending the answers. And now the judge's job is to determine whether the, pers the thing behind the screen is a human or a machine. And if the judge feels, oh, this is a human, you know, the responses are very smart and it turns out to be the machine, that means the machine has been successful in fooling the judge in believing that it is a human, which means that it has become at least as good as a human and therefore it has become intelligent. And that was Turing's answer to how would I know that something is intelligent, it de he devised the Turing test, right? So, we will talk more about acting humanly part in a, in, in a few minutes. Any other uh, justifications for why one definition is the right definition? What, what about people who think, say that thinking rationally is the right definition? Yes. What is your name? Anj. Harsh, yes. Arsh. A R S H. Okay. So, you are between Harsh and Anj. Okay, good. Yes. Very good. So, he says that let us go back, you know, whatever millions of years and there are no humans. There are no Paleolithic people, there are no old people, there are no ancestors of humans. Even when the humans were not present, there should be intelligence. How can we define AI such that AI could not have existed before humans came in? I guess he is not just thinking about the past, he is saying tomorrow, if all humans die, AI should still, should still exist, right, in some sense, right. In other words, his point is, let us not restrict our definition of AI to uh, humans, right. How about people who believe acting rationally is a good definition? Why do you say that? Yes, what is your name? Rajbir, yes. Right. So, Rajbi says, how would I know? He is asking almost the Turing question. Even if something thinks, how would I know until I can see it act? And if I see it act and that is the only way I can guess that something is intelligent, then I think acting rationally should be the definition. And basically, this set of ideas is what we are, which leads to a reasonable definition of AI that more people in the field agree with.